Then finally we go to the lower right and um, I have to rebend the saliva ejector. and put another right hand bend in it. Um, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned these soft stops, but I call it a suction muffler. It really muffles the sound and it really makes it easier, I don't, at least for me. And you position the, um, the aspirating part of the saliva ejector about oh, a couple millimeters inside the end of the stop, soft stop. I, I like these things. We use them a lot. They're uh, made by Smart Practice. Um, again, it's positioned here, and and the nice thing about that bending it like that is it it stays out of the way, at least for me. So I finished um, with the yellow, but if I didn't, you know, I just had to put it back on, um, and. I'll do a tactile debridement in this posterior sextant then you know again holding on holding it kind of angled back and getting to the positioning by looking in the mouth getting to the distal lingual and going around cleaning Sometimes I'll cross instrument. In fact, I'll, I'll routinely I'll cross instrument. I just have to tolerate spinning this thing because a lot of times we're nearing the end. I can do that. Um, and, and the lower goes a lot faster. And on, on an entire upper, I may spend all, an entire hour or more. Um, so again, you know, you're going all the way into the mesial. And then, you know, if you feel like you need to look at some of these other spots in, you know, on the, on the right side of the incisors, then go ahead. So I've switched my Explorer now to the yellow, yellow, or the left, left, positioning my, um, rotating my insert. I get into this corner and then I just clean, trying to work my way across, back and forth, back and forth. Go into this, to the distal, clean there, the distal, clean there, the distal, clean there. Anything up in here where I just want to keep looking, then I'll position my patient and myself. Well, actually, I position myself. I keep the patient in the same position. Um, and again, you have to angle back. Get to the distal corner. Go in. All the way on the buckle. Now, you can use the red the right explorer. In both of these areas on the right sides of the posterior teeth you can use the red explorer. Um, I find that I have to really more severely angle this thing back in order to get it in there and it puts a little strain on the top of my forearm so I don't like doing it it's just you know what's more comfortable for me and being comfortable is just a huge part of this. In review on the lower, I start out on the lower left and I have the left left explorer on. I do a tactile debridement of the lower left posterior and the lower anterior sextants and then do a scope debridement starting um, on the distals and then going to the lingual with the left left and then um, going to the left explorer and doing the, the buckle and the mesials of the posterior sec, um, sextant. And then the anterior sextant um, 
if there's pocketing there, and a lot of times there's, you know, not every tooth is pocketed, um, so that doesn't take as long. Um, and then, so on the lower left and the lower anterior, I rarely use more than two explorers. On the lower, well, on the, uh, I take that back. On the lower uh, anterior, I might use the red explorer um, from the left side. Um, while I'm working on that left side. Then I go to the right side and um, use the left left explorer and the and the left explorer to do the distal and the buccal and then the lingual and the mesial um, and then rarely have to use um, any of the right viewing explorers, especially the right right. Hardly use, I, I don't remember the last time I used the right right. Um, and occasionally have to use the right. So on the lower, we're primarily using two explorers, or at least I am, and um, every once in a while, three.